very interested in the international currency role of the dollar, and which is here unusually represented on a dollar bill, is uh, Charles de Gaulle, the General de Gaulle in the 1960s, who uh, pointed out that uh, indeed, um, you know, the, having the, the dollar as an international currency was a pretty nice thing for the United States, because what he was thinking about especially is because everybody likes to have these dollars to do all these functions that I just discussed about. Uh, well, that also means that whenever the dollar, whenever the US government wants to issue more dollar liability to finance something, or in, in general, when uh, agents in the US need financing to finance their imports or other such things, then it's very easy to find in the rest of the world demand for those dollars. Everybody is happy to actually invest in those dollar assets to hold them. And that means that you can issue pretty much large amounts of safe assets at a very high, at a high price, because there's a lot of demand for those assets. So um, I'm going to quote the goal here. He says, this unilateral facility that the United States has means that the dollar is not an impartial means of international exchange, since it is a means of issuing credit for one state. In other words, because there are all these properties of the dollar, People wanting dollar means that the budget constraint of the U.S. as a country is relatively soft. And this is a great advantage. Now, he was obviously very jealous of that and took some actions uh, against that. Uh, however, one thing that maybe he was not so um, worried about or, or, or interested in is the fact that if you are the country at the center of the international monetary system, you're also the international lender of last resort of that system. And you also provide insurance to the rest of the world. Your assets are safe assets, and other countries' central banks, for example, hold those assets. Private sector of other countries hold those assets. And these assets have to keep their values in bad times. So you have to run pretty consistent policies, responsible policies, and have enough fiscal capacity to back the value of these assets, particularly in bad time. You are providing the insurance as a reserve currency issuer to the rest of the world. So this is, in other words, maybe we can call that the duty uh, of uh, the country which uh, enjoys the privilege of issuing uh, the international currency. And because of... Um, of this uh, specific role of uh, the international currency issuers and the very large amount of uh, liabilities, so dollar, uh, for example, treasury bonds, treasury bills or government bonds which are held in the rest of the world, uh, the value of these uh, treasury bonds being obviously uh, guaranteed by the fiscal backing of the, of, uh, of the US government, we may have a problem if we look uh, into the future. So here it's more speculative, of course. So why, why would we have a problem? Uh, we would have a problem because if you look at the size of the US economy in the, in the world, which is on this graph here, so you would see the, the US uh, size going down, it's the, it's the red line, uh, and the China going up sizably. Of course, uh, European countries also tending to shrink. But the size of the US economy shrinking uh, in the world, in a situation in which, at the same time, uh, the demand for U.S. safe asset is not going down. In effect, it's been going up because you have a lot of emerging markets growing fast. You have a, a, a lot of people in the world who are uh, demanding U.S. safe assets. And there's a problem of uh, mismatch, in a way, between the growing demand of, uh, for U.S. Uh, safe assets and uh, the size of the U.S. and the size of the, uh, the U.S. economy in the world economy. So because of that, because of this problem of a shrinking hegemon, uh, as we, we could call it, in the, uh, in the world economy, we might have at some point a confidence crisis. Will people in the rest of the world believe that uh, the liabilities of the U.S. that they hold, these dollar assets that they hold, will keep their value if there's a lot of these liabilities in the world and the shrinking size of the U.S. economy? That's the question. That's the question of a shrinking hegemon. So if we think uh, the dollar hegemon is not sustainable, 
then that means we, we have a uh, Trifin dilemma. So the Trifin dilemma was, it, was Robert Trifin in, uh, in the 1960s, explaining exactly more or less the, the same type of issues, except that at the time, of course, the, the dollar was pegged to gold. So the problem was maybe more pressing. You had a lot of people holding dollar assets in the world, a growing demand for those assets, and those assets were supposed to be redeemed at the with gold. There was a uh, possibility of, uh, of confidence crisis here. If I believe that you are going to uh, transform your dollar into gold, there may not be enough gold for me to transform my own dollar into gold at a later date, and so we are, uh, we are going to have a run. That's a confidence crisis. So uh, if uh, uh, the analysis I, I just gave is uh, indeed relevant for, for today's environment, then we may see a new Trifin dilemma. And that means that at some point in the future, the global economy will have to switch either uh, to another single international currency or because we see several economies being important in the world economy besides the US, there's the European economies, there's also China, we might switch to a multipolar international monetary system. And this is the next speculative question. In order to get out of the dollar, you have to get out of the dollar into something. And the question is, what is the something? So, uh, as was pointed out already by uh, several of the other speakers here, one natural candidate is the euro. Uh, if we think about, uh, about the euro, uh, there might be some, some, uh, some issues, and, and which I will discuss briefly later. One is the RMB. Others we can think about is cryptocurrencies, these digital currencies, or a basket of uh, digital currency, as was recently proposed by Mark Carney, uh, the governor of the Bank of England, in, in a speech. Now, just to go back in time, uh, for, for two seconds, uh, very naively in 1998, I was looking at the possibility of the euro uh, actually replacing the dollar as a main international currency. And, and there uh, I was writing that uh, the internationalization of the euro would hinge critically on a number of factors. And at the end, you see between brackets, there was especially on UK participation uh, of the <laughs> European Monetary Union. So that, that was a little bit uh, of an issue here. Uh, anyway, so besides this problem with, uh, with the euro, so if we go back towards should we, or will there be switching to the euro, I think uh, there's a number of, uh, of issues with the financial architecture of the euro area, and in particular the lack of a true euro area safe asset, which has been alluded to, so I won't dwell on that. And indeed, doing the right thing for the euro area, as Philippe pointed out, would be also doing the right thing for the internationalization of the euro. RMB, well, I would say currently we are very far from having developed enough financial markets, convertibility issues. So maybe in the future we are, but in the, in, the, in, the immediate fut in the immediate future, it's very hard to see the RMB internationalizing very fast. Cryptocurrencies, I'm going to be quite brutal here. To start with, it's not clear why these things exist at this stage, not clear which problems they solve, and very clear which problems they create. So I wouldn't see them as any reasonable candidate here. Uh, digital currencies are uh, much more uh, of, a, of an interesting topic than cryptocurrencies. Uh, so we can think that you know, digital currencies may bring in better technologies as medium of exchange. As I tried to point it out, this is not enough to be an international currency. You also need to be a safe asset. So here, obviously, if it is a sovereign issued digital currency, why not? But then we inherit the safety property of a sovereign, and some sovereign can, can definitely do that. This is also true if we do the synthetic um, currency, basket of currency, the synthetic hegemonic currency proposed by Mark Carney. Uh, it's also potentially a better medium of exchange, but it would be essentially a basket of several sovereign digital currency that could solve the problem of a shrinking hegemon, but we still have the issue of the safety of that thing and who backs it uh, fiscally, which is a similar problem to what we have had with us special drawing rights uh, at the IMF and probably why they never took on any international importance, at least so far. So the last thing I want to say about these digital currencies, because I think uh, there's going to be a panel, we'll, following panel will talk a lot more about that, is that uh, it is absolutely uh, a good idea for efficiency to have better transaction technologies, 
But new transaction technology do not need at all to be coupled with new currencies. You can very much uh, in, improve on transaction technologies in particular cross-border without having to introduce a new currency. And usually, so the, it's the government who is the issuer of a currency. It is the government which imposes a currency as a legal tender within its border. And in exchange for that, it provides very valuable public good in exchange. It provides monetary policy stabilization. It also provides financial stability. Now, if we think about privately issued currencies, I can see that the use of it could be enforced via a network, essentially, of customers with privileges and stuff like that. But I'm asking what is the public good that is being provided here. It's, I can see the profit to the big firm issuing it in exchange. So uh, this leads me to, uh, to think that indeed the regulatory uh, environment has to be very careful uh, about those matters since the public good uh, provided via monetary policy and financial stability are extremely, extremely valuable. So based on all that, I think to conclude, if we think about the future, we'll probably still live in a, in a dollar world for, for a while. <laughs>